Welcome to the second module about data. In this module, we focus more closely on how computers process, represent and transmit data. First, we will recap the previous module. We established that data in its most abstract form is the basis from which information can be derived. In a general sense, data refers to a collection of facts, symbols or numbers. In digital technologies, data refers to numbers, characters, images, symbols and sounds that can be manipulated, stored and communicated by digital systems. One way to explore how computers process and transmit data is to look at how we as humans transmit and process data. Exploring voice, tone, verbal and nonverbal cues, words to transmit and to process, we look at body language, expressions, listen to tone and what the person says. But what if a condition was changed? What if we weren't able to speak to or hear one another? How would children transmit a message to one another? Perhaps in the class, change a condition, such as not being able to speak or write, and have students think of ways to transmit a message. Pair students up and give them time to figure out a plan for their new system. Either give them a random message to send, or ask them to create a message. Reflect and share ways of communicating. What worked best and why? What made it difficult? There are different types of coding systems that are used to transmit messages. Let's have a look at some examples, including braille, sign language and flag signals, such as those used at airports or the semaphore system. These systems have been created for particular purposes and work with certain limiting factors or existing factors. For example, braille is a configuration of raised dots used where people cannot see clearly, but are able to use the sense of touch to feel the message being conveyed. Sign language or flag systems work with the ability to convey a message using visual mechanisms. There are also other ways, such as through the sense of sound, perhaps by the use of whistles or by voice. The text you are able to read on the screen is one system that humans use to convey information. Computers are electronic machines. The computer uses electricity, not mechanical parts, except for some components like the disk drive, for data processing and storage. Electricity flows through switches. If the switch is closed, the electricity flows. If it's open, it doesn't flow. To process real-world data, for example a text message, we need a way to represent data in switches. Switches have two states, they're either on or they're off. Unlike open and closed, like a door, when the switch is closed, the electricity flows, and when it is open, it is not flowing. Let's imagine it's like a cable, we're disconnected, it is off. When it is connected, the electricity flows, and it's on. Computers do this representation using a binary system. Binary means that it is composed of two parts, on or off. Using this system, we can give an off switch a zero and the on switch a one. Please process this data translates to, which is far too complicated and there is too much room for error. We communicate algorithms to computers using programming languages and computers present data to us in our language so that we are able to easily interpret the information rather than a bunch of zeros and ones. We will be exploring programming in the programming module. But in the meantime, if you'd like to learn to count in binary, have a look at our counting in binary video. There are some great opportunities for connecting how computers transmit data with science and particularly mathematics. We will link to some of the great CS Unplugged resources too in our activity examples, which have a number of great binary games for children. While we talk to computers using programming languages, having a basic understanding of how computers transmit data using binary is very important. Digital technologies is not all about programming. We need to apply computational thinking and our understanding of many important concepts as outlined in the national curriculum. In this module, we will continue to look at different representations of data on computers, such as images, text and sound, and how this data is transmitted and checked using binary with accompanying activities.